we favor blastocyst embryos that have been frozen. And I think that's just because most labs have the most comfort with warming blastocysts. Many cleavage stage embryos, which are frozen on day three, don't do well when frozen and surviving the warming. And so I think most labs would feel much more comfortable warming a blastocyst. The difference in blastocyst expansion comes into play when we determine which embryos we're going to be selecting first for transfer. Assuming all of them are genetically normal or untested, my algorithm is to first look at that stage of development and select the embryo which had the energy and potential to develop to the furthest stage as possible in that given time frame. So from the day five embryos, if we had a fully hatched blastocyst, I'd be selecting the sixes over the fives, over the fours, over the threes. It really depends on the laboratory's success in their vitrification program. If they are well-versed in freezing and thawing fully hatched blastocysts, those embryos have fantastic pregnancy rates. And they've already demonstrated that they had the energy and that potential to develop as fast as possible. And they've already hatched out of the zona and they're ready to implant. Preimplantation genetic testing or PGTA for aneuploidy or for the correct number of chromosomes is most highly indicated for patients who are 38 and older. And that's because the number of chromosome abnormalities markedly increases with advancing female age. However, some individuals or couples will choose to do PGTA at any age. We select first on the stage of development, and then we get into the beauty contest. That's the A, B, C, and D. That's really just the tiebreakers that come down to a group of beautiful embryos that if they've been chosen to be frozen, then they should be more than capable of establishing a pregnancy. The A, Bs, and Cs are are honestly a subjective grading scale, which can vary greatly between laboratories, between technicians. Um, We do a lot of quality control and training to make sure that within our systems that the grading is consistent and accurate between techs and between labs. But depending on their protocols, they could be grading nearly everything A, as in it's a beautiful embryo and it has an inner cell mass, a trophectoderm, it will have reproductive potential. And so we're going to be very optimistic. Other labs will call very few things A's and save that for textbook perfect and grade the majority of embryos as Bs, saving Cs to describe the borderline embryos. There's really no way to tell without looking at protocols or speaking directly with the laboratory. But in general, As and Bs should have very strong confidence and Cs comes down to that conversation with your laboratory. 